Here are six insane things that Notion can do that you're probably not using. Most people only scratch the surface of Notion, using it as a glorified to-do list or notes app. So here are some random cool things that you can do in Notion. Subscribe for Notion tutorials, let's dive in. All right, for the first one here, let's say you have a notes dashboard, something like this, note one, note two, and you click here and you can see note one, blah, 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 and you can see note two, blah, blah, blah. These are really useful notes. But this here is kind of annoying to sort through every time you have to click onto it to read the text. But there's a much more seamless way to go through data like this. What you can do is click here on settings and click on layout. And instead of viewing this as a gallery, we have a bunch of different options. And this one here is incredibly underutilized. It is the feed view. Now we can scroll through your notes incredibly quickly. And the cool thing is if you've set up maybe a system here for archiving your notes, so a checkbox here called archive, and you show that property and you have a filter that hides anything that's not archived, what you can do is scroll through these notes very quickly. And if you've addressed this note, you simply click in archive. And now it gets removed from this view here. This is a much more easy way to scroll through your notes. Note four, blah, blah. And we get this option by using the feed view. By the way, if you're a headquarters user and you want to set this up, I'll just add a note here, note one, blah, blah. What you can do is simply scroll down, go to your quick notes, open this up. And what we'll do here for your quick notes is right click on new note and do duplicate. And we'll call this feed and change the layout here simply to feed. So now you have a list view like this and you also have a feed view that you can scroll through. And because we duplicated this tab here, we still have the filter that is saying not to show us stuff that's been archived. And that's feature number one. The second feature is an absolute game changer. It's also to do with databases. Let's say you have a database in here with all your favorite hikes and you have Sydney Harbor Bridge as one of those hikes. Well, what you can do now is click here on add property and use this feature here. This is the place property and it allows you to do something incredible. So if I search here for Sydney Harbor Bridge and select that here. What we can do with this property here, and by the way, it has to be this property. You cannot simply write the address in a text field or somewhere else. But by using this place property, what we can do is change the setting here and view this as a map. And now you can see this Sydney Harbor Bridge sitting here. So now we can view this information on an interactive map. This is really useful for client CRMs, for storing your favorite cafes, and obviously for planning trips. And that's the second feature that you have to try out. Now, let's say you want to have a mood tracker. Well, what most people do is set up something like this. And instead of having it as a table, a lot of people probably have it as a calendar. So here I can see my mood, happy, add an icon, something like this. This is all right, but you can't actually see this data here. So it doesn't help me out too much. So instead, what I would recommend doing for a mood tracker is using another database view called the form view. So if we click here on form and write mood, what I could do here is add a bunch of options in this question two here, or I could click on plus and add any of these different types here. I could do a number if I want to do it one out of 10. I could do a simple checkbox system. And then here for the title, let's say describe today in one word. And then here we'll do the main emotion. Well, here what I could do is click on share form and I'll copy this form link and I'll simply paste this link. Now this here, this form, I can bookmark in my browser. And then here I can fill out today, incredible and happy and click submit. But the cool thing here is under responses, this here can now be used as useful data. So I could see the day that it was submitted, which we had with a calendar view, but I can also see this emotion here of happy. And what we could do now is use this feature called groups here in order to see how often Often we are happy, anxious, or sad, or whatever other emotion you want to add in here. So if I fill out another one as an example here and click submit, that now shows up here so I can see sad. And what I can do here is click on the emotion and click on calculate and do count all. So here I could see happy one and sad one. And what this can do is to help me pick up on trends. Let's say on the layout here, I'm also viewing this as a calendar and I'm showing the property of emotion. Maybe I could see on average, I'm happy on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And the more specific questions you add to this mood tracker, the more informed you are to make changes to your calendar that can hopefully improve your happiness over time. I've actually tracked my mood for quite a few months now and it's helped me inform some of my scheduling decisions. All right, let's say you're writing a stand-up set or you're writing a song or you're writing a book whatever it is. What most people do is just have a page and write their ideas in here. This isn't a very useful system. Instead, what you can do is have your page here with your book, but then here on your main dashboard, we will add a button. If you haven't used buttons before, they are really, really useful. So on this book page here, what we'll do is write database here. Obviously, I love databases. And this here will be your book ideas database. And we'll add a property here of the date. And obviously you can add any other property. So now in our main dashboard, what we can do is write book idea here and have this as a button. And this button here will add a page to. So now we can select the data source. And that source here is the book ideas database that I just created. And then we'll click on add action here and say that we want to open up this page that we just created. 
and then I'll click here on done. So now when I'm working in my main dashboard, obviously I'll have other stuff in here like calendar and all of that. What I can do now is simply click on book idea, blah, blah, take that note, hello. And then when I'm working on this book, I'll make my way to this page and find all of my ideas here in a database. Now, if you want to learn more about buttons, like creating automatic properties, like setting the date automatically with the time is triggered and stuff like that, I'll link a separate video all about buttons in the description. All right, let's say we're in your main dashboard here and you have your tasks. There's a feature in here that a lot of people aren't using. So let's say you have this task one here and it's to do with work, for example. I'll click here and create this work tag and then let's create another task here, which is run, for example, and that is to do with my fitness. And then let's create another one, which is called subscribe. And that is to do with my side hustle as an example. So I have these three different tags here. What I can do is click on these three dots here to change the color. So let's make work orange, let's make fitness red, and let's make side hustle blue. So I've got these three tasks here. Well, what I can do now is see those color coded tags here on these task names. So what I'll simply do is click on settings and there's this underrated feature called conditional color. So if I click here, I can add a color setting. You can actually have multiple color settings in here. But what I'll do is select the color setting here of tags. So now you can see task one is orange, run is red and subscribe is blue. And these colors here are coming from these colors here under the tags. And this feature here can be really useful for your organization as you can quickly distinguish tasks purely based on their conditional color setting. For this last example, let's use the tasks dashboard as well. What I can do here is click on plus and let's say that I have a meeting, for example. Well, over time, I might have quite a few meetings and that might get really, really annoying and difficult to organize. And of course, what I can do is click here on plus, add a table view, and filter it with the name of meeting. But these meetings here might be difficult for me to distinguish because they're all called meeting. So what I can do is click here on the plus property and use the underrated feature of ID. And it generates this ID code now. So even if all of these tasks here have the same name, I have automatically generated an ID code. And what I can do here on the ID code is actually edit the property and add prefixes. And I can bet a lot of you haven't had a play with the ID property yet. If you don't have a task manager in Notion yet, then check out headquarters. There's a link in the description, or you can click on this video here to see the full tour. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.